Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to my channel. It's time to listen to another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from an anonymous caller. Hey Lloyd, um, quick little question here. So maybe other people can relate to this, like dealing with your family, um, contacting you and sort of messaging you and and it feels like they're trying to reel you in and I don't know if it's hard for me to trust if that's a, a genuine thing that they're doing because they care about me or if it's something that's being done because of the propaganda that's coming from the watchtower right now it really seems like they're trying to push certain particular messages and I um it's hard for me to be respond to that because I, I'm always constantly waiting for the like, when are you going to come back, you know, or sending, it's going to lead to them, you know, trying to convert me again. And I've been very adamant, you know, since my teenage years that I'm not, I'm not going to be a Jehovah's Witness. It's, it's, I never was and I'm, I'm not going to be. I don't believe what they believe. So um, it's it's almost like getting to the point where it's offensive for me because I just can't live my life and I'm getting really frustrated with this and I, I don't really know how to go forward with this type of behavior and I don't know if it's just um, my parents and my situation or if this is more common or if other people are experiencing this right now because of the type of uh, propaganda that the Watchtower is producing. It's really... I feel like it's making my parents feel guilty, like they've done something wrong and they need to correct something. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with me. I just don't believe what you believe. So like, where do I go from here with that? Right? Like it's, it's, it's just a weird situation. So I don't know, maybe somebody else can relate to it and give me some points or tips or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful new year and uh, thank you for all your content. All right, take care. Thank you so much for that message. I think lots of people will relate to it. Piecing together the jigsaw pieces that you're giving me, it seems that you were never baptised into the religion. Therefore, your parents are viewing you as the one that got away or the one who needs to return to Jehovah because the end's coming and the only chance of their daughter surviving Armageddon, in their mind, is for you to realise that this religion that you were raised in just happens to be God's one and only true organisation and you need to join it if you're going to survive Armageddon and survive into the paradise. I think your parents are genuine. They're obviously misguided and misled and indoctrinated and their minds are not their own. But they're not doing this just to hurt you, I don't think. Even though it is hurtful for you and you say you find it offensive, I would find it offensive. I would find it deeply troubling and annoying and irritating and frustrating. As far as their motives are concerned, though, try to understand that they're not really in control here. They're being controlled. They are being controlled by an organization that also wants to control you. And that's all this is. They are puppets, essentially, for an organization that wants to get its claws in you and turn you into a devoted follower so that you can then go on and persuade other people to either return to Jehovah or join the organization. What to do? Um, there aren't really any easy answers. What I tend to say for messages like this, where it's, you know, what do I say to my believing relatives, is it's difficult to just snap people out. In fact, it's almost impossible. If there were a magic bullet for helping our loved ones out of their indoctrination, there wouldn't be such a thing as cults <laughs> because we would just deploy this magic bullet 
and it, the ripple effect with everyone who has someone in a cult who they care about, cults would no longer be a thing. It's not that simple. It really isn't. However, you're in a fairly unique situation as someone who was never baptized. Therefore, you can't really be an apostate because an apostate is someone who joins the religion by getting baptized and then leaves. You never joined the religion, which is what you've just told me. Therefore, you can't leave it. And if you can't leave it, you can't be an apostate. And that gives you quite a lot of freedom, actually, to be able to communicate your thoughts frankly and honestly to your parents. And I think that's what this boils down to. I think there needs to be communication and honesty and transparency. It's maybe not a case of you picking up the phone to them now or ambushing them, but the next time they call you and say, you know, the end's coming, uh, did you see this thing on the news? Uh, surely this is a sign of the last days, yada, yada, yada. I would be like, well, about that. <laughs> Since you keep mentioning this and you clearly feel very passionately that not only is this the truth, but also that I should join your religion, when are you going to give me evidence that this is actually true? I'd just, I'd say it like that. When are you going to give me evidence? And they might say, I've been giving you evidence since you were a child. And I would say, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. What you've been trying to do since I was a child is indoctrinate me with a set of beliefs that don't make sense, that objectively, objectively aren't true. Because if what you believed was true, you should be able to objectively verify that what you believe is true. And if it's objectively true, then everyone would be joining because you, you just can't deny that it's true. They'd be teaching it in colleges and universities if it were objectively true. The fact that they're not teaching it in colleges and universities isn't a satanic conspiracy. It's because there's no proof. You don't have proof. You have emotion, zeal, you have religious fervor, you have fanaticism that you could have in any religion. But what you don't have and have never had is objective facts and objective evidence certifying your religion to be true. So my question to you is, when are you going to show me some evidence? And then let's talk about me joining the religion. And I'll happily, you could say, I'll happily do it. I will happily join your religion if you show me objective evidence that it's true. Can you do that? <laughs> of course, then they might take you through the box ticking exercise, which I've talked about before on the channel. Yes, but what other religion would do this? What other religion should do that? Oh, so you're telling me that in order to be God's one true religion, I just have to tick a bunch of boxes. I have to start up an organization where everyone's a pacifist, everyone calls God Jehovah, everyone preaches in multiple different countries. Okay, no problem. I'd actually quite like to be God's one and only true organization. So if those are the criteria I need to <laughs> I need to tick, sure, I'll go ahead and do it. That that would be fun. <laughs> For me to become God's one and only true faithful slave just by meeting those criteria. Brilliant. Let's do it. It's manifestly fallacious reasoning, and they know it. Either the organization was chosen by God or it wasn't. That's what it all boils down to. Can they prove that Jesus chose the organization in 1919? What was being taught in 1919 would be my question. Have you looked into that, Mum and Dad? Have you looked into what was being printed in the finished mystery at that time? which is a publication Jesus would have been inspecting if he was inspecting all the religions. Do you know what it says in the Finnish mystery? Have you seen <laughs> what the writers have to say in that particular publication, which apparently was a turning point in theocratic history? Realistically, you're not going to wake your parents up just by 
hitting them with reality like that. Because unfortunately the way it works is that when people are in a cult, they want their cult to be true, even if the facts are staring them in the face that it isn't. And the only way they'll ever have a chance of even beginning to wake up is if it's their decision and if they already have doubts. Maybe, maybe your parents do have doubts that they're suppressing. But more than likely they don't. And that being the case, more than likely if you do have that conversation, which I've kind of hypothetically gone through, it's going to have no effect. So manage your expectations. The bare minimum is that you guys need to reach an agreement whereby they respect your boundaries and they understand that actually religious trauma syndrome is a thing. This is not just a difference of opinion. This is actually something where you have very likely been traumatized to some degree by your experience with this group and frequent admonition to return to the group is re-traumatizing you or could re-traumatize you and your parents need to cut it out. You guys need to agree on basic boundaries whereby you understand that there is a fundamental chasm in what you believe and what they believe or don't believe and you need to respect that that chasm exists and not try and make things worse. And I'm sure you'd be willing to fulfill your side. I mean, it's a similar thing with my in-laws. I make it very clear that they're not to, for example, try indoctrinating uh, their grandchildren, my children. So there's that limitation on their side. By the same token, they're not going to find me in their faces, disrespecting their religion and mocking them and deriding them. So I hope some or all of what I've just said has been useful either to you or to other viewers. Again, thank you so much for sharing this question because I'm sure many will have related to your predicament. If you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go on speakpipe.com forward slash cedars. But for heaven's sake, don't leave a voicemail without indicating clearly if you do not want me to broadcast it on YouTube. So if you're fine with me answering voicemails here on the channel, you don't need to say anything. You can just launch straight into it. But if you do just want to leave me a voicemail and not have it broadcast, please indicate this clearly. That's all I have for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.